friends, family, subscribers to the YouTube channel, Adventuring with the SGOCC. A little extra surprise. So, Dad and I came here a number of years ago, thought to try to get in, and they wanted a pretty hefty price tag, so we passed on it. But now there's U.S. Army military vehicles out front. There's some out in the front front, and um, we're going to see what's going on. Maybe we can just walk around and do free stuff. So this is a, uh, what do you call this again? This is a Husky. This is a mine clearing vehicle. These were used extensively in Iraq. Even though it's a 1970s vehicle, a lot of this heavy-duty Army slash, and this is actually Marine Corps, U.S. Marine Corps, USMC, um, these what? have been used extensively for years. If you look here, these panel clips right here, these will actually hold a series of, of, of almost wing-like panels. It doesn't mean what you always think it means. So the slave, that's actually a generator designator. Yeah. You have the slave switch, which does the pumping or pulling. Anyway, they'll hold these giant panels that if you drive over the top of will be able to detect metal parts underground so that you can identify and clear mines. So it's extremely effective vehicle against um, IEDs or improvised explosive devices. Which so a lot. to return to this real quick, oh, the slave thing. Sure. This is a switched electrical on-demand relay. That's correct. That's what it exists for. That's just because you hear the slave in social constructs doesn't always mean you think it means what you think it means. So I have lots of friends in the engineers. So my first unit for deployment was with an engineering battalion. And uh, we I think we had about a half a dozen of these, along with buffaloes, huskies. Look at the huskies, wheel. Uh, I'm barely and taller than the wheel. Husky, I'm actually shorter than the wheel. But the actual wheel, the I'm wheel taller wheel, yeah. than that. No, so, absolutely. Here's now, something The bottom is specifically designed the way it is. Um, this was one of the early pre-V bottoms. So when we go over and look at the buffalo up, uh, up near the gate, you'll notice the bottom is actually designed as a V. This is pre that era, but close to it. So if an explosive actually detonated under the vehicle, it would disperse the energy of that explosion left and right of the vehicle, rather than maximizing the pump underneath, which could blow through. In fact, a common problem with tanks in Iraq and Afghanistan and other places was that they were able to develop improvised explosive devices that could blow a hole through the bottom of the tank. Hang on, Tim. Hang on. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, rambling too much. So, this is a T60 Alpha. I am six foot three. Okay, maybe six five with the hat. I am like my four foot is over seven. Six feet, okay, I can't even I'm reach not inner that. fender to inner fender to give this a little bit of scale. At six foot five with the hat, I'm barely above the engine cover in the aft. Not even to the engine cover in the fore. This is a huge piece of equipment. Hey, Cassie, come here. Yeah. You want to put your head in there? That's what they did with privates. If they were bad, they'd close. No, that's not what want they Want me to boost you up so you can go on the walk around area around the turret? No, because it says specifically to keep off. <laughs> Forgiveness over permission again, brother. F fun Hold brother, on, let me, just, neither let me just take off. this off. <laughs> Look at the anti skid on top. Uh huh. Now, this, uh, this weird loop thing that I joked about putting Cassie's head through. That was designed so that when the tank was transported by rail, you'd roll that around and you'd lock the, um, <laughs> the tank barrel in place, either rail or by aircraft. And so. these these plates up here are designed to blow off. Yeah. Um, so if, you, if it got shot didn't at, use don't doesn't use reactive armor, which is a, when a bullet hits and it explodes. But they do use these these refractive or removable panels. Uh, sometimes they're made out of metal. Sometimes, often though, it's metal filled with ceramic infill, so, so that'll take heavy duty rounds. And if you listen to them, these, yeah, these they're hollow. hollow. Yeah. And look at this. this not so hollow. Look at this barrel. Ooh, look at that. Can yeah, I even touch the it? The size of this cannon. Uh, hey, somebody uh, come here. It's taller than me. I want. I want you to see that it's steady. Uh, yeah, it's a rifle barrel. I oh, touched it. Oh, it is a big rifle barrel. You can barely do it, but you're. So, if memory serves, okay, in World War II, Shermans were equipped with 65 or 70 millimeter shells. 75. This is obviously much bigger. Be nice. The length of the barrel also contributes to the ballistics. 
I'm I'm gonna guess and say this is 85 or 90 millimeter. Ah! What, what size machine Beh. gun would you say that is? It's a 50 caliber or 30 caliber. That that's a, that's a 30. A 50 has a like bigger, a 30, though, bigger, yeah. bigger nozzle. It's sort of How y'all doing? Oh. We're doing a YouTube video for our this channel. Tank was replaced. So 1995 when these came out of service, um, the Abrams M1A1 Abrams is the tank that replaced these. Some other fun features is these awkward kind of almost v comb-ish tube systems. Yeah, wasn't that designed for uh, mortars? For smoke mortars, yeah. yeah. You didn't usually <clears throat> use explosive mortars, but they would deploy smoke. So one thing I notice here is in the old pictures uh, of you see old tanks, there's a driver and a forward gunner in this one there is only an aperture for one yeah. driver so instead of having two personnel in the front of the tank to operate it there's one so this would actually hold four if i recall correctly four personnel would fit inside this four main crew so you have okay. a driver you've got a primary cannon one or two people operating the cannon because the ammunition is stored inside, so one person's loading from either side. And then you have usually a command pop that would be where your lieutenant yes. or somebody would be, and, and so they can observe. Um, what are you doing? Ah! So. Put me down. Ow, that hurt. So there's a. Uh, <laughs> Look, honey! There's a movie. I fell! There's a movie. And you scratched with, my uh, back. Brad Pitt. <laughs> and the kid that played Spider Man. No. No? He didn't no, play Spider-Man? He didn't play Spider-Man. It's Fury Road. Fury, yeah. yeah, Fury. Fury, Fury, that's what's yeah. So, in that movie, that they very... That was tank's name in World War II, by the way. That, that's awesome. Yeah. It's just they just named that tank. It was a movie. So, but in that movie, it very accurately portrays... A child. ...what happens inside the turret when firing the, the mechanism and the actual firing it's of the gun. Here. One guy... One guy will load. There's another guy in the turret who has a foot operated trigger switch. So once it's loaded, the breech is closed and locked. It's ready to fire. He steps, boom, it fires. A good tank crew in a World War II Sherman tank could get off. Now, you may want to check this, but this is what I read. A good tank crew can lock and load and fire eight rounds a minute that would be super fast that yeah, is unbelievably fast we take a walk over to the, um, sure. well i want to go over this way because right in front here and you could probably get a, a view of it tim Tell me that. in our catalog of videos we have been to one titan II missile silo that's been decommissioned right there on its side in front I believe that is a Titan II missile. We'll find out when we waddle on over there. Let's go. Hey, I'm the only one waddling, stick boy. What are we doing? Waddling. I'm waddling. the only one waddling. You in shape people are just not having it. The only shape I have is lowercase i. <laughs> <laughs> Gone. The Count von Galen Hanger. Sounds very German to me. But I'm not casting dispersions. The Operation Paperclip was a thing. It was. Look it up and read about it, folks. It will blow your mind. How does it drop? Get out of the street! Well, <laughs> I think the pros were all politically motivated. The cons were all... Out of the access Get out of the street! I wanted to go see the, the tank. Aww. So, that doesn't folks, give you a reason to stand again, in the street. Uh, none of the three of us adults here can accurately tell you what is the name. Get out of the street! Of this fighter jet, it is absolutely a fighter. Though it does say experimental. Come here, view of this part right here. All right, Cassie, what do you think the weird pipe thing in the trouble is for? I know, I know. Maybe for like a missile, not a missile. Um, I don't know, but here I'll show fueling. you. Yeah. Look up there. And you know what these are for? 
That's actually you. You you will usually, yeah. Yep. Um but no. Used for other things too. No, they're hello. There are land speed record cars waiting Look to be built. Look at all those liars up there. By the way, thank you, the Mormons. Yep. I showed them We the started liars. land speed racing, racing in Bonneville. Look at this Check big thing. The Mormon Look how many small children you can take inside this. The Mormon meteor. It's a thing. We also founded Tucson. Look, I get to play with the fighter jet. We're big in the West, people. Well, we're big everywhere, but we're really big in the West. There's one of the recoverable boosters. I think it's a Titan II missile. A what? Titan II missile. Is it? I don't know. We've been to a Titan II missile silo that's been. I think that's the big giant thing. Yeah. The space shuttle? Yeah. But I could be wrong. Could be. At this point, we're several feet away and it's all conjecture. Wow. Look at how big that is. Jeez. Oh. What's it say? Solid rocket booster for the space shuttle. Oh, congratulations. Nailed it. Cassie, go jump over there so we can take a picture. No, Boy, it's a lot to. bigger in person. Go stand next to the booster rocket. Do not climb on or tamper with aircraft. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it's a whole lot bigger in person than it is in the... Uh, you the videos. You know the space shuttles they put up in, their, in the space? Yeah, That's this is one of them. One. Look how tiny you are. The crazy uh, part is... I'm just a little ant. Trouble. So, little, uh, little known fact which is... Built um, with fuel. Solid fuel, yeah. Near Fort Huachuca, behind Huachuca City, there is a dirt airfield that is enormous. That airfield was built so that the space shuttle... If they couldn't land in California, could catch the second place and land in Sierra Vista, Arizona. And then if they couldn't land there, they landed in White Sands, yep. Mexico, which they've actually done only once. Three airfields all in a row. Cactus. <laughs> I tell you, that landing uh, choice would have to be made pretty fast. How long do you think that booster is? Uh, I'd have to look, but I would say that's got to be 100 uh, meters. At least. Break on a, on a standard track. Oh, oh uh, absolutely. It is? Let me see. In a gentleman, no! Apparently, I can't go in. Dad. <laughs> oh, no! You know the answer to that, brother, without me even saying it. Come on now. Boy, there's a lot of people that want to come in. Oh, we don't even know the price, do we? Oh, look at that. You, uh, oh, I got you have to, right. you have to pay extra for the outdoor displays, and that tour has been sold out. Oh, I'm sorry, folks. Yeah, it's an extra eight bucks for uh, the outdoor displays. Those are the ones I like. So not, the not today, stuff. day. All the stuff that's out there, <laughs> they have a tour guide walk you around from what it looks like. I'm sure uh, in Arizona, we don't call them tour guides. They're docents. Dose, well, <laughs> <laughs> they're tour guides. You know, I've been to every every U.S. Army installation I've been to, they have a museum. And um, one at Fort Bliss, Texas, which is outside of El Paso. Uh, their museum out there, they have a V2 rocket, a V1 and a V2 on display. They've got a bunch of other stuff. It's, it's oh, pretty sorry. cool, the collections we get. Let's so take a look at the big tank out front. Yeah, let's That's a look Russian at this. tank, right? I think it's a T-54, right. Are you sure it's a 54, not a 34? Oh, no, 34 is the one with uh, 30, Yeah, there were 30s, Cassie. 32s, 34s. You want to have your production era? Oh, give this um, to Brother Little. Yeah. Um, most of our medium. You doing all right back there? We just moving too fast. Oh, you want me to? Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> the medium and light duty German tanks were destroyed by the T thirty four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and it was a and that Russian tank was actually pretty fast for its weight. Right. It was a medium tank that did very well against all that stuff. And like most Russian made equipment like this, which when we get up to it, you'll be able to see, um, 
These, these pieces of equipment were built to be idiot proof. See the lizard? Where? We're getting diverted. What lizard? Right there. Oh, yeah, I see the lizard. Wait, where? It's right, right at the base tree. of the tree. My what concrete. Patient? Walk towards that lizard. The tree right there. You bear? There's yeah. a lizard. Just go, a lizard. Go, go. This hey, tree? Oh. Excuse me. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> I'll catch it by the tail. I got it. I got All right, it. that's enough of that cast. Let's go. So the last two pieces of equipment we're going to look at is, ah! I believe it's a T-54, uh, which is Russian-made tank from person the up. late 60s to the early 90s. Uh, they were manufactured and then sold and distributed all over the place. Like most of the Russian equipment of the era, it was designed to be practically idiot-proof. Um, it was like, kind of like the AK-47. It's an idiot-proof weapon. Yeah, but isn't this the type of tank where they hit it near the turret and because they have the ammunition in the turret that it blows up easy that i'd have to ask somebody because my What's i understand me? how I these things work. work but i don't remember those particular specifics because i've heard somebody some people talking on about the russian tanks over in ukraine where they're they're just popping it popping the in the right place the at the right location yeah and it's blowing, blowing them up well some of the later tanks they had smaller turret boxes on the top for various reasons because they realized they didn't need to and I was wrong. This is a T-72. Oh, nice. So. Mine. And that gun on top is probably a 50 caliber size weapon. I forget what its millimeter rate oh, is. Oh, that's it's a like big a 12. one. 12.7 something or other. Yeah, it, it, yeah, I believe it's right. Yeah, so 1971. When we invaded Iraq both the first time and the second time, a lot of these oh, tanks were taken you. as trophies by the U.S. military and flown back. Some of them were used in training scenarios and operations. Others were not. You know what that's for? What? Is that to drop it off of the mount? It's probably to take the take a portion the of the barrel off. And then switch it, right? Yeah, might very well be. I don't think that's, that's probably not useful anymore, the way it looks. So, and I've seen a couple of these kinds of guns mounted in other units. Um, I'll show that in a second. Uh, you know, the, the four barrel quads, uh, called, they're called gazes or ats or something like that. Anyway, the gazes is another vehicle. Um, I forget what they're called. One thing I do want to point out is that, so these containers on the side, you can tell these are all wood covered in fiberglass. They're not, they're not metal. This, uh, these top pieces, there might be metal on the inside, but again, wood covered with fiberglass. That's actual metal ones. So maybe these are supposed to be fake fillers to look like it, but these would have been your fuel tanks. Again, on the outside of the vehicle. Don't know how safe that is. Uh, what size? This looks pretty big. This would have been comparable to... Hold on. Yeah, this would have been the, the tank that would have faced off against that T-60. I got on! And okay. that once we came out with the Abrams, they went to the T-90s. Dad, look. And that's where the... Yep, that's a look, telescopic, Dad. sorry, periscopic sight. Dad, so they're usually look. lower looking in when they drive. I can't tell them. We have various pieces of equipment that did Dad, the same look. thing. Stop the tape. Yeah, I think the fiberglass wood ones were just to make it look like it, but there's another. Oh, thing. look at that. There's a hole. Yeah, it got shot there. Do you think they actually left it so they can drive it around? Uh, a lot of the people did. I mean, so at Fort Riley, we had some ones like these, some 54s and other things. And a lot of them were specifically what? set up so that if you wanted to drive them Shot for display again. purposes or otherwise, you could. And this has a 360 degree. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the turret rotates. This has got a lower, the turret heads wider and lower than 54 is. Now that I'm close enough and we can tell the difference. So. I know, um, you can tell the difference. This is skinny. Lower profile. Yeah. And so this other piece of equipment over here, this is a Buffalo, uh, originally manufactured in South Africa. Not to be confused with my ex wife. <laughs> Funny story. This was one of four vehicles that was placed in competition to be the mine clearing vehicle and explosive clearing vehicle for the U.S. Army. It lost, and a bunch of units bought them themselves. 
and then the U.S. contract decided to buy them as well. Yeah, so this was a competitor I was told against the Striker vehicle and lost because it wasn't a U.S. manufactured piece of equipment. These are originally manufactured in Africa. But you can tell the bottom here, everything in the bottom is shaped in a V to displace those blasts of energy. Um, this would hold, I love it. <laughs> People, soldiers and, and Marines in the U.S. Army and Marine Corps have got six, six senses of humor. So you'll see stuff like this. Um, this crane arm with the teeth on it was specifically designed to reach forward and dig into uh, to find explosives. A lot of the units would tie a large stuffed animal on the front of the, of, of the device. So the, when the explosion would come off, what happened, it would give them an idea of the, the, the high intensity. Because you'll have a, an explosion go off and just be a lot of dust. This is to help them give them a better understanding of what was going on. And they would hand the uh, stuffed animals. Sometimes it was a Curious George. Sometimes it was a Dora the Explorer. Sometimes it was a big teddy bear. It really didn't matter. But it was all these kind of otter things. So in addition to the few people driving, that back section of tube would hold between six to eight individuals and equipment. One of the big problems a lot of our Joes had, especially during the... Uh, the hot summers in Iraq, which get up to 115, 120, they're make, they make Phoenix look nice and balmy, uh, is that the air conditioning units of these weren't great. So these guys would climb out after an eight, an eight hour, whatever, and they'd drink two, three gallons of water in that time and just, their skin would just, it would look like they just climbed out of a coal mine because so much sweat had come out of their bodies and so much dust and dirt clung to them. Alright, Cassie, what's your tagline? This has been a Fun Brothers production. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share.